Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at two new drops from Razer, the Basilisk V3 and the Death Adder Hyperspeed. A lot of my friends have only ever owned one gaming mouse, and as surprising as that is to me, I find that more often than not, a lot of people just don't try a whole lot of mice. And if I was to walk into a big box store at the end of 2021, we're now in November, we're pushing the end of the year, and somebody was looking for a new mouse, they didn't really know what they want, and they were looking for upgrades to their setup, like a mouse pad, I think I would probably have at the top of my list right now the Razer brand of all of the various options that they do have, which all fall into categories of their own and are all very, very good. Right now, I have the Razer Viper Ultimate that is on sale currently for $99, and I still think it's one of my top five wireless gaming mice. I think only gets better over time as far as batch quality. The weight is definitely at a sweet spot, and it just feels good for a multitude of different games, tag shooters, tracking games like Apex and Fast Flicks like Quake Champions or Unreal Tournament games, you know, of that flavor. As far as the Death Adder Hyperspeed, I definitely want to crack into that as that is their new ergonomic wireless lightweight mouse at only $59.99. And the Razer Basilisk V3 likewise is a cheap, kind of fits into its own category, kind of like the G502 with the ergonomic hump on the left. And it's not really a natural or I shouldn't say natural, but typical ergonomic mouse like the Death Adder. Uh, but it has ergonomic grooves and ergonomic flares, but kind of feels still ambidextrous. And it actually feels quite good in game. And definitely all three of these mice, including the Orochi V2, which now is on sale for $49.99, I think all definitely provide an excellent array of options and diversity in somebody's mouse selection. Cracking into the Death Adder Hyperspeed from Razer, it is a battery powered mouse. It does have side buttons on the side of mouse one that do control the DPI. You can also preset them to uh, other options if you so choose. I personally don't really fiddle with those side buttons. If I was to play something like an MMO like New World or World of Warcraft, I could probably get some very good use out of those or an RTS or something like Dota or League of Legends. Uh, but for first person shooters, I really don't keep my uh, index finger off of mouse one. So I did not get use out of those in things like Apex Legends, uh, Halo, or other first-person shooters. As far as the texture of the mouse, I actually do really enjoy the texture. I don't like it as much as the Death Adder V2 Pro with the rubber side grip, but overall it is very grippy and feels very nice in game. As far as the side clicks overall, they did a very good job with keeping them very, very tactile. I actually don't have a whole lot of post travel on uh, my mouse four, and I actually have none on mouse five, so they did quite a good job on the side clicks. They feel probably the best that the Death Adder mouse side clicks have felt for me personally. The top shell of the mouse does come off like the Orochi V2, and you can see that there is a battery for the AA slot as well as the AAA slot. You don't use both batteries, you use one or the other. And for me personally, the weight of the mouse did not feel quite as good as the Death Adder V2 Pro as far as the balance of the weight with either a AAA modded in the AA slot, a AAA in the AAA slot, or a AA in the AA slot. You can see that the mouse is using those modified kale switches, the same as the Origi V2, and for me, the switches felt very, very good. As far as side flicks of mouse one and mouse two, I have virtually none, but when you are holding your finger down on left click, you can feel a bit of grinding of the switch below. The buttons on the side of the mouse one, the first one higher up is actually more tactile on my copy than the one below. The one below is a lot softer and less audible than the first one. And on mouse one and mouse two, you can see I have a bit of pre-travel and just a bit of post-travel. The mouse does use an optical sensor. It doesn't feel quite as good as the Orochi sensor in my personal opinion, which could just be a difference in the DPI deviation or the weight balance of the mouse itself, which for me just didn't feel quite as good as other mice in the Razer lineup. And as you can see, the skates are PTFE out of the box and the skates actually aren't horrible. You can definitely upgrade them to get better third-party skates, but I don't think that you necessarily need to. Getting into the good about the mouse, the price point is absolutely phenomenal. And again, that battery life is going to last you a very long time with one lithium battery. As far as the overall build quality, it's absolutely phenomenal. The skates are good out of the box. Everything feels good, right? So what's the problem, if anything? 
Again, for me, it's just the weight balance. It makes the mouse feel a little bit sluggish and it just feels off. I think at the price point of $59.99, I can still recommend the mouse. A lot of people are not going to feel that issue. They're not going to be affected by that issue. And I do think that most of us are going to find a comfortable position with the battery either in the AA, AAA, or modded AAA in the AA. But that moves me to the next mouse in the Razer lineup, the new Basilisk V3, which I actually performed surprisingly, and I can't even believe I'm going to be saying this, but I performed very, very well in first-person shooters with the Basilisk V3. Let's check it out. The build quality of the Basilisk V3 is very good. It's actually one of probably one of the best that I have tried. I have no creaking, I have no wobble. The paracord out of the box is good. And as far as the touch of the mouse, the coating is very grippy and the rubber on the left side of the mouse is actually a great implementation with a very large surface area of the rubber. And likewise, when you flip the mouse over on the right side, you have a large surface area of rubber and it is a nice implementation. The only build quality issue on the mouse is the side button on the side of the mouse. It just doesn't feel all that good when you're pushing it in or have your finger resting on it because it does have quite a bit of wobble. And surprisingly, side flex is very very minimal i have virtually none on mouse one and mouse two and as far as the pre-travel i have a bit of pre-travel on mouse one and mouse two and virtually no post-travel and to give you guys a sound test of the optical switches in the basilisk and the mechanical switches in the death adder The Basilisk V3 is the first Basilisk I've tried out of all of the Basilisks that have released previously. And for me, the weight balance was actually very good. The paracord utilization here is good. I don't think that you would have to replace it. And these skates are actually large and in a very adequate position uh, to get just a overall really good feel um, on the mouse and with my particular grip. And I think the grip is one of the main essential reasons why I play better with the Basilisk. I grip the mouse a little bit uh, more fine-tuned. It almost feels as though I'm holding onto a writing utensil, kind of how it felt with the uh, SteelSeries Prime Wireless and Prime Mini Wireless, compared to the Death Adder that kind of gets my index finger further away from my thumb and just makes my grip feel more opened and less kind of clamped and finely tuned like the Basilisk V3. Despite playing pretty damn good on the Basilisk V3, I don't think that it's something that I would use for my everyday purposes. I feel just more comfortable on the Orochi V2 and the Razer Viper Ultimate. And I think if you are trying to go for a little bit more competitive of a mouse, those would probably be my two recommendations over the Death Adder and the Basilisk. I do play very good on the Death Adder V2 Pro. For some reason, I wasn't very good on the uh, death at our hyperspeed, but I do think that could just be a weight balance issue. If you're not affected by it, it could be a very solid addition uh, if you are a death adder fan or if you're looking for a very large ergonomic mouse. So a whole lot in the Razer lineup of 2021. Again, my options that I would personally pick are the Orochi and the Viper Ultimate, but again, two solid additions to the Razer lineup. I hope that helped, guys. If it did, please leave a subscription to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace.